Hello everybody. Today we are looking at the original Magic the Gathering duels of the Planeswalkers game and I'm going to talk about it several times. But right now I want to show you the original Astral cards that were designed specifically for this game. The development of this game started a long time ago, a long time before it was released and it was under the supervision of Sid Meier himself, the man who is responsible for such great games as uh, Civilization for example. And uh, we're going to look at how these games were made with love. And they commissioned the original artists, and when I say the original artists, I mean the artists from 93, 94. Not those who were actually active when the game was released, but this makes us think that these cards were commissioned very, very early. And as you know, the latest set that we have got here is The Dark, so this game fits perfectly the 93-94 Old School Magic. And this is why I personally got into Old School Magic. And uh, we have got the fourth edition here, which is interesting. So this was already released in uh, the development cycle of this card game, but uh, still the Dark is the last set here chronologically. So I want to talk about these Astral cards. First of all, let's take a very quick look at them and then we'll see them in action because there are many interesting things to talk about. Uh, so first of all, we have got some amazing compatibility here. There are some bugs, but if you just think about that, this game is more than 24 years old. This is simply amazing. It's running without any emulation or virtual machine or anything of the sort. But we have got a couple of bugs. For example, the types are not displayed correctly. You see the Black Lotus here. It says Artifact Wombat. Pandora's Box is also an Artifact Wombat. And Sorcery is also Wombat. Just like instant. But okay, let's not rip on that. Uh, let's take a look at the cards themselves. As I said, they were designed by the original artist. And of course, with computer, the developers had a lot of design room, but I guess they went for some rather simple effects. They still went for something which is not impossible, but a little bit more difficult to replicate without using a computer. So let me show you this. First of all, we have got Gem Bazaar. Again, I want to say, in advance, if you don't know these cards, they were designed with some random effects. And the random effects do not actually have a big list of them. We will see them in action. I'm not going to do any spoilers for you. So Gem Bazaar by Liz Danford is definitely one of those cards that I wanted to have in paper. You know, maybe I will even print a proxy of these because it's such a beautiful card. It always mesmerized me. You know, this is just so beautiful. You've got all of these colorful gems and when it comes into play it says choose a random color. In reality of course you don't choose anything so it becomes a random color land which actually makes it maybe even worse than a basic land but in some ways it's a little bit better because if you have a multicolored deck you may hope that the next time you tap it you will have a color that you need but in reality it's not very good just like most of these cards, to be honest. Prismatic Dragon, 2-3. You might guess that it fits the cycle of small dragons, like Dragon Whelp. He's also 2-3 flying for 4 mana. And the Prismatic effect, as you can see, is again not very imaginative. It's just about the colors. Designed by Amy Weber. I love these original arts. So during upkeep, he becomes a random color permanently. Well, not really permanently, but until your next upkeep. And for two, you can change this color. Is it really good? No, not at all. I mean, two or three flying for four mana. That's nothing amazing. And the ability to change color, yeah, it can help him circumvent some protection, but it's nothing special. Rainbow Knights, I believe, is actually the best card here. And you can see that this card was designed with the later cards in mind and about later cards. By later cards I actually mean as you can see Pump Knights. Douglas Schuller, look at the art, look at the art. You know, this art was designed with very high effort. It was designed just like for the paper magic and I really would like to have these as uh, cards released by Wizards of the Coast just as proxies even if they're not legal anywhere but they're just so beautiful so yes 
gains protection from random Carla permanently and uh, first strike until end of turn. Yeah, so this is basically your pump knight. And here, unfortunately, this protection cannot be uh, changed in any way. I mean, the color cannot be changed. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess it's one of those good cards here. Of course, it is probably strictly worse than pop knights. I wouldn't say strictly worse. Yeah, you might gamble here and maybe get some good colors if you don't like it. Bounce them into your hand if you can. I don't know. So this is one of the good cards. I would say the best card here. <coughs> Whimsy is well play X random fast effects. Of course, the art is notable. Anson Maddox. His art is easily recognizable. You will see what these random effects are. By fast effects, we typically mean some kinds of effects from permanence or usually instance, I actually believe. You'll see it's not as impressive as you think. And here it's weird that they didn't put X in the casting cost. Maybe it's the bug, but I don't know. Next is, okay, so as you can see, we've got 24 Black Lotuses, 24 Ancestral Recalls. But we meet the minimum deck requirements, so that's fine. This deck is legal, according to Richard Garfield design, I guess. So no worries here. Uh, yeah, we've got 24 Black Lotuses and 24 Ancestral Recalls, just to draw a lot of cards. And hopefully by turn two, I will be able to show you all of these effects. Because some of these creatures, I mean the creatures of course, have summoning sickness and we can activate their abilities right away. Next, Quinton Hoover. The incomparable Quinton Hoover. Call from the Grave. Actually an interesting card, I would say. Put a random creature from a random graveyard into play under your control. Deals the amount of damage equal to that creature's casting cost. Well, um, <laughs> you see how this is much worse than reanimation. I'm not sure that reanimation was actually there when they were working on this card because, well, reanimation was released in uh, 1997, I guess, in Tempest. So, anyway, yeah, that's not a great card, not a great card, but it, it wouldn't be really terrible, I guess, especially because it's a sorcery, it's not an enchantment. So, if you bring it into play, yes, surely you get some damage, but yeah, it's, it's fine. This is, again, by Quentin Hoover, one of those cards that would be fit for unglued. And uh, goblins. Actually, here it says gnomes. Ignore this. The creature types are all wrong here, because air elemental is certainly not elder dragon. Again, this is a bug that can be fixed, but if I apply the patch that is supposed to fix it, it's even worse, so I'm not touching it. And... Uh, or wait, actually, maybe I did apply the patch and this messed everything up. I don't remember. Probably that's the case. Doesn't matter. Anyway, these are goblins. And uh, why is this relevant? Because you pay two and one red for each target. But when they say target, it's not really target. It's just the X that you pay for the number of targets you are going to tap. And goblins tapped in this way do not untap during their controller snakes and tap phases. So this just means that you will be able to tap a lot of creatures, and if you're unlucky to tap these, because they are goblins again, they will not untap. So, again, it's random, and all these random effects, it's very difficult to be able to make use of them. Not very good, not very good. Orcish Catapult. I think that we had a Dwarven Catapult in Fallen Empires. So this is a kind of a... <coughs> copy of this card, but it says randomly distribute x minus o minus 1 counters among a random number of random num target creatures. Random distribution, random number, random target creatures. So, does it do anything? I guess, maybe if you are playing a creatureless deck, you can somehow, but you can imagine how, how suboptimal this would be. That's a terrible card again. <coughs> Oswan Jaguar. A Jaguar is actually good. The Jaguar is actually good. And yeah, this one is by Melissa Benson. Again, let's appreciate it. It's really beautiful art. The logo by uh, Melissa Benson is here. And so is the eye. Uh, not the eye, of course, but the finger of the orc. Very nice. Love this art. 
So, Aswan Jaguar is escaping from this ancient stone carving, I guess. Comes into play, choose a random creature type from those in target opponent's deck. Again, how would it work in real life? You would have to look through your opponent's deck, find out all of the creature types that exist there, also taking into consideration the oracle changes. So yeah, this wouldn't work well. But for two green and tap, you can bury target creature of the chosen type. Well, it's good against tribal decks, it's good against decks that do not have a lot of creatures. But, uh, and yeah, three mana for two, two, that's not terrible. That's actually a fine card. One, three, fly, play a random effect. Don't even have to tap this. Play a random effect. But the art, the art, that's simply amazing. Pandora's box, you guessed it right when you were looking at it, even before I displayed the name of the artist, Amy Weber again, with her amazing whimsical artifacts. And yes, you can see these evil eyes are looking there, just like in uh, Hercules Recall, we can see them in the chest. Uh, but Hercules Recall is by another artist, of course. And yes, this one is getting bloody and dangerous. So Pandora's box. Choose a random summon card from all players' decks. For each player, flip a coin. If the flip hands heads, put a token creature into play, treat it as though as an exact copy of the chosen summoned card were just played. So again, you're doing this not for yourself only, but for another player as well. You see that they're symmetrical, and since they are random, it's very difficult to make use of them. But anyway, let's see what we can do. Let's battle. Let's battle a random opponent. Let's see. Okay, we've got a Lotus and a Sister Recall, which is not impossible. Jemba's up. Also pay attention to the sound effects. They were designed specifically for these cards. Uh, for Jemba's up, we have got this great tune. Nice. So Black Lotus can give us something to play already, but I'm going to Ancestral the hell out of my deck. Hopefully getting more Ancestral and more. And uh, yes, you have to wait a little bit here while I'm um, boat fishing or solitaring if you wish. My goal now is to cast a ton of Ancestrals. And, uh, have some permanence by the beginning of the next turn so that I can show you these cards in action. Ah, that's very unlucky, I didn't get any more Ancestrals. That's actually not a good deal, but okay. Let's get this. So here's our Prismatic Dragon. What color is he? Actually, when he comes into play, nothing happens, so he still is white, as he's supposed to be. Let's make sure that we play all of the cards. We will also play the Jaguar. We'll see what our opponent is playing. I suppose it is a deck that has red in it. So Jaguar will be hunting mana birds. So as you understand, we're talking about birds of paradise. Presumably this is a red and a green deck. I didn't actually look at this. Again, um, we're looking... Yeah, maybe one more Jaguar. What do you say? Okay, let's go for the fairy dragon. <coughs> and double white for the Rainbow Knights. Double white for the Rainbow Knights. And we'll wait for the Catapult still. Uh, we can play Whimsy as well. Should we play Whimsy? Uh, okay, I say we play one more Jaguar to see what kind of creatures our opponent has. Hunting Dragon, okay, so this is presumably Shivan Dragon himself. And maybe, maybe for three mana, what should we do? Yeah, I don't want to waste Wimsy on just one effect. I don't know, that's, that's a big decision. But okay. Okay, black. Looks cool, right? It was one. Oh, I almost created this effect. Sorry if you are. 
Very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Thank you for those amazing wings of changes. You know, he's green. Okay. Yeah, let's go crazy. Let's go all in with Ancestral. How many cards? So 43. Okay, because I was just uh, curious about it. You know, still, after all these years, this is one of the best interfaces I have ever seen in a Magic game. Uh, this game, you know, doesn't age like at all. I understand it has got all of this goofy design and such, but in reality, in reality, it's, it's a game made with love. It's an amazing game. So, okay, Jambazar. We've got one red and one black. Um, should we... Okay, we don't have Whimsy. We also should cast Goblin Polka Band. But I say let's get more Black Lotus. Yeah, that should do it. You know, when I was playing that, I would never have thought that I would be able to afford in uh, about 20 years from those days when I was playing as a teenager. Uh, I, I had no cards at all. You've heard the story, you know, we had no cards back then. And I never would have thought that I would be able to afford Power 9 on Dual Lands. You know, even if it's Collector's Edition still. Okay, so we've got the box. Uh, we also should cast Goblin Polka Band. And the only thing we will also need is a uh, call, call from the grave, call of the dead. What is the name of this card? And also we should try Orcish Catapult. And also Whimsy. A big Whimsy. Still no Whimsy. You know what? I will actually draw a lot of cards and uh, decide. Okay, we still have a lot of cards. Do we have... No, we still don't. Still don't. Okay, tap for blue. I want to call from the grave. I really want to call from the grave. Ten cards. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, here it is, here it is. Fine, fine. I don't need anything else. Let us... I guess... Cast a huge whimsy next time? Um, play one ancestral? No, okay, it doesn't. We don't really require it, do we? Okay, let's just attack for the hell of it. Oh. And discard some creatures. Hopefully, to animate them using Call from the Grave next turn. And uh, let's discard Ancestral and one more Ancestral. We have too many of these. Okay. I want to see some creatures from you, man. <clears throat> I really want to see some creatures from our opponent. Manifly, that's nice. Let's see it. Draw some cards. I want you to draw some cards. Okay, well, first of all, I guess we can use Call uh, from the Grave, so that you can hear the effect, the sound effect, and we'll see what creature we can get. Yeah, this was the spooky effect from that card. So we got our Prismatic Dragon and we got 4 damage. Okay, now, now, I think we can activate Pandora's box. Why not? Bazaars are changing the mana color. Here is my flip. 
I've got Tails. My opponent has got Sun. Oh, this is the fact from your Pandora's box. I, I love those 90s synths. Right, so he's got Dragon Ball. Which means that we can actually go crazy with our catapult. And yeah, okay, first of all, we can hunt the dragon. Let's hunt the dragon. Select your prey. <laughs> and actually, it's interesting, I, I thought that the creature type would be changed after this ability is activated, but no, it's not. Okay, then I guess we can try and cast Whimsy. Or should we wait again? Okay, yeah, I'll attack. Why not? No, poor dragon. Okay, here are the birds that go on to four. Alright, so here is the Black Lotus. Let us first of all hunt the birds. Hunting the birds. Select your brain. Yeah, this was the effect from the Jaguar. And we can also play Orcish Catapult. Okay, I'll distribute. Oh, yeah, let's not forget the Mana Flare, right? I might kill a lot of my creatures. You know what? Let's, let's cancel that. Still have all of this in the Mana Pool. Um, let's Polka. Let's Polka instead. And yeah, you'll see it's hilarious. The effect is so cool. The sound effect. Oh yeah, we can only tap for red. Listen to this. Okay, good old cheesy fun from the 90s. So, in the end we tapped a lot of creatures, as you can see. Now, let us activate the ability of uh, Fairy Dragon. We need one green. Orcish Catapult. And Birds of Burgess. Yeah, now you don't actually need to see the Orcish Catapult itself because you just heard the sound effect. Uh, let's activate one more time. I don't actually remember if these are exactly the same effects uh, as from Whimsy because something tells me that they are. Cast Jump. <laughs> okay, fairy effect jump, and you even see the art from jump. So that's cool. Thought lace, okay, very helpful. Blue, I love it how they change the frame here as well. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I hope I'm not dead. How does he do that? Oh, okay. Well, wow, that's very interesting. Okay. Um, what should I do? I guess I will ancestral myself. Have two cards in my deck. Get a lotus. And the Lotus allows us to activate the very last card from this deck, which is Whimsy. And we should also look... Okay, wait. First of all, let's try Rainbow Knights. Let's gamble with the Knights a little bit here. Add random power. What should you say? Plus zero, plus zero. Plus one, plus zero. Or plus two, plus zero. Wait, they're actually better than... I'm absolutely... Yeah, okay, I, I forgot. This is not like Pump Knights, yeah, because Pump Knights will only get plus one for two mana. And here you have got the chance. But the chance is always worse, right? The chance is always worse than being sure of guessing given one power. Power increased by zero. This is your sound effect. Okay, not very exciting. Let's get two power, maybe? By zero. <laughs> All right, random number generator hates me. 
Okay, let's let's go for Whimsy and, uh, and win. So what effects are we going to get? Let's see. We can lose this. Okay, not bad. Millstone. So I lose. Healing self. It still hasn't resolved. Healing self. Portal of Suleiman. Uh, Tails. I get the tin of the bottle. This is the infamous token. This is the infamous token. If you haven't seen my videos on old school tokens, I have got this token with this art. I'm actually waiting for my uh, martyrs to arrive to have uh, three of them and I will brew some deck with the artifact damage prevention. This will be fun. Also ancestral. Okay, so I'm already dead. I will lose because of this. But we've seen all of the cards. I would like to thank you for watching. This was uh, good old cheesy fun. But again, I want to emphasize how beautiful these cards are and how much effort was actually put into designing this game. And, um, you know, they didn't and they actually couldn't, as you can imagine, because the internet was not a thing that everybody had. People did not have credit cards, especially teenagers who were playing these games. But um, actually, teenagers probably did not game on their parents' PCs either, I guess. Uh, but the idea here is that this game was made with love. It made me love Magic the Gathering and uh, you know, I played some of the subsequent games, those for the Planeswalkers, the later games that were released on an annual basis, I think, 2011 and later. I played this Battle Mage, I think was the name of the game, and some other car uh, games, but you know, none of these games actually caught my attention and uh, they, they didn't really catch me. And this game I actually played for years. I played it not just for years, I played it for decades. Today my go-to Old School Magic uh, game is uh, Forge, and if you don't know about Forge, we will definitely have a video on that. So stay tuned for that. This is my best solution for playtesting and solitaire right now, even on the mobile phone there is a nice version. But uh, before that I was using this game and uh, again maybe it's a good idea not to be greedy for these developers and such and if they gave us such an amazing game that uh, made me choose magic for life then maybe you know it's a good idea to do that rather than going uh, free to play and pay to win but i'm just rambling about it anyway thank you for watching i will see you in the future bye